Welcome back, you lovely, beautiful Marvels. How are you? Hi, Dana. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thanks. I'm good, Dana. Um, we that's are a, back for another episode. Say, hey, yeah. how are you? And you're not expecting it, and you go, um, yeah, or yeah. <laughs> My favorite thing is when they bring you food in the restaurant and say, enjoy, and then you say, you too, and then you're just, you know, I, oh, I know. Dorky autistic thing. Yeah. Oh, no, I've said that. I mean, I, you know, oh, okay. I mean, the more, the more I do this, the more I'm like, wow, that I really, I'm really moving along the, the continuum, the spectrum yeah. of, of things. Uh, this, <laughs> you know, it's really funny. No, I know. It's, I think it's like, for me, it's just like not paying attention. You know, it's yeah. like, yeah. you know, I mean, um, needing to get an answer out too fast. So it's not formed right yet. Yeah. 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 Or like, I always walk in the morning. So I say good morning. And then when I walk at night, just randomly every night, you know, and I'll see someone say, good morning. Good morning. It's like so late. I have one script and it doesn't modify. Winning, yeah. winning, uh, winning. Okay, or as okay. the young people say, that's an L. That's an L. That's an L? What's the L? Yeah, for a loss. Oh, like a loser. A loss. Yeah. Okay. yeah. No, that's funny. That's an L. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning all this like new speech, like facts, like Good. Like, I like how you're doing your hair too. That's part right. Of like this or like yeah. on God, <laughs> on God, like ONG on God. I'm like, okay, I don't know what's happening here. On Lots God. of that on God, uh, like, like totally, absolutely, you know, yeah. you know, in yeah. agreement. Anyway, yeah. Dean and I are not necessarily here to talk about how old we are and how we need <laughs> Gen Z speech to be deciphered for us. <laughs> but it's a good segue into it. The use of language and what language yeah. means to different people, right? Like words yeah. matter, right? Words matter yeah. and words change. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Words exactly. matter and words change. And, you know, I I think for me, I, you know, I struggled with this regarding like the, you know, just the the phrase or the title. Uh, so I can't even talk. The, the words neurodiverse, neurodivergent, neurodivergence. Like, mm -hmm. you know, getting that under my belt, I still make those mistakes, you I know, too. today. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really yeah. trying to be better at that. Yeah. But I, I do think that what's so interesting is, you know, as I've shifted um, the way that I might refer to a neurodivergent individual, right, mm -hmm. I have now moved really squarely into identity first language because uh, my clients prefer that. Um, yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm working with teens and adults. And so um, they prefer that. However, when I was working with younger kids, parents would often use person-centered language. And so maybe we'll get into that. Dana, you want to talk about the difference between person-centered yeah. and identity-first uh, language? Yeah. And I really came in contact with this when I first was diagnosed too and was starting awake and um, listening to and and noticing a lot of what people would write that were themselves in the community and it I, I was we were talking this morning before we came on about a 2023 article that i was reading that really was looking at identity first which is saying i am autistic versus person first which is i have autism or dana has autism versus dana is autistic and one is saying you have this thing i mean that it the I always have to think about the person first sort of started by trying to say that person is not all that label. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. it, I think it sort of started out with the heart in the right place. Like they're more than that, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's that person first would be like Dana has autism. Um, and then as the, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, give an example of how you struggle with the neurodiversity, neurodivergent, the neurodivergent community. Did, did I do that right? Doesn't feel right. I it? think that's a neurodiverse community because I think neurodivergent is an individual, but Individu the neurodiverse uh, okay. is the group. So the neurodiverse community, like mostly adults uh, or young adults, um, said, I don't like that. It kind of feels like you are saying I have like this disease mm -hmm. and it's this thing that I have. And I think some of it's changed also as we've learned more about autism, knowing it's a, a genetic neurological issue. 
Um, and I do think that younger people are better about, and it, this is all positive, about identity first, because it's sort of as a descriptor for how my brain works. So when mm -hmm. someone says, you know, would say, I have ADHD versus, oh, I'm ADHD. To me, in my mind, when they say I'm ADHD, my brain sort of does this um, translation of that's their brain. Like, that's how their brain works. My brain is ADHD. And I'm like, oh, yeah. You know, and then you, you, I think we saw that falling off first where people wouldn't say I have ADHD. They'd just say, oh, I'm ADHD. And so this movement towards I am autistic had really gotten a lot of pushback. And we saw a divide um, between adults. And by adults, I mean like probably 16, 17 and up, right? Young adults, pre, however you define adult, and parents of little kids that were autistic. And it was a huge divide. And you could even see it in the literature. I could see it depending on which site I was on. If it was parents, it was they have autism. And if it was adults, they said, I'm autistic and kind of fighting about it. This recent article, though, this is very interesting, a new twist on it. So the identity first, which is I am autistic, um, it was almost 90 percent. There's only 13 percent of adults that still use I have autism, which sort of, you know, we should people should be able to use whatever label they're comfortable with. So I don't have a problem with the 13% that want to still say I have autism. Fine, it's their label. What's really interesting about this study though, is it shows the parent group almost the same. Uh, the If it was 87% uh, for uh, adults use it saying I am autistic, the parents now are 81%, uh, which is really much higher than it used to be. And I think it's that's the effect that the neurodiverse community is having on parents and the explanation of why we want to say that. Interestingly, it flips the other way when we talk about psychologists and medical doctors and people in the psych field, which is, I was, I, my mind was sort of blown when I was reading this. I was reading the text first and I'm like, oh yeah, okay, parents are getting on board. And then I saw the you know record screeched when I saw that, that fellow psychologists are still saying uh, a person with autism. And then I'm like, yeah, that's kind of been my experience too. It still is fairly, um, professions when they have power over somebody, they like don't change, they don't like changing and they like sort of staying up there and saying, well, I know best and I don't care what you're saying. And it sort of is like the idea of a gender label, someone ought to, you can't tell somebody what their gender is, it's their identity, they tell you, right? And I still slip on this all the time. We have a, a commercial on here. It's for um, one of the hospitals around here. And it's, in, it's a doctor who's also an administrator. Um, and the stereotyped gay guy, kind of feminine, how I see him, right? I say stereotyped. And he says, I'm a cisgender male. And I remember me and my wife were sitting there watching it. And I'm like, someone needs to tell him he's not cisgender. And without a beat, she just looked at me and said, that's not for you to say. And I'm like, you're right, you're right. You're right, thank you. You know, because I love getting caught in those things. If he says he's cisgender, that's his identity. It's not up to me to say, no, you're not based on my percept. And so I think that you have younger people that have grown up a lot with those kinds of labels and then to apply it to neurodiversity, it's similar and we're seeing that zeitgeist change, but it's still horrifically pathologized and seen as like this disease state in our field, which is really terrible. And why we yeah. one of the reasons we do the podcast, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I mean, I I think it's funny because it's like I would never describe myself as, um, hi, um, I'm Gwen and I'm a w woman with Asianness. <laughs> like right. I just would never, yeah. or I, I would have never gay. do that. Yeah, I have I'm gay, gay, right? I have gay. Yeah, I have the right. gay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, you know, I I see this kind of continuum of labels as um, accepted, like kind of on the continuum of, of, of acceptance, right? right? So I think a lot of, I see a lot of person-centered um, language and, you know, I was taught person-centered language in grad mm -hmm. school, right? Yeah, um, and that was really, that really came out of that place, like you said, Dana, of yeah. um, how do we respect the person? This person is not just the diagnosis, right? So right. Well, I understand where it came from and I used it because I wanted to respect the person. And then as I started, and so I think a lot, uh, in my experience, a lot of parents, 
with newly diagnosed kiddos or young kiddos, they tend to use um, person first or person centered language. But then, you know, as I've been working more and more with teens and adults, it's really shifted to identity yeah. focused. Um, and so it's like, oh, yeah, I, you know, I'm an autist, you know, or I, you know, I'm autistic. Um, uh, oh, yeah, like, uh, you know, I've got an, you know, I've got, you know, um, uh, an, you know, I've got an autistic sibling, like, you know, like, yeah. like this yeah. is, this is, yeah. it's, and so I started using it. And then I always say to my clients, you know, if that is, doesn't feel right to you, you know, please correct me. Like, I'm happy right. to change that, you know, and, and, and use what you prefer. Right. I will say in general, though, most of my clients um, want and desire identity first yeah. language um, but my colleagues don't. Yeah. Isn't that weird? I mean, I even think in that, IEPs and stuff, like yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah. I'm not seeing that much, that transition. Wow. I think parents yeah. are getting on board with their kids, which is why we're seeing some of that shifting, but our, our field is really, it also reminds me of, um, I really press my students to, instead of saying ASD, I really press mm. them to say AS unless someone meets the criteria and you're talking about treatment for the parts that are hard about it and they, because I think you can be autistic without being autistic spectrum disordered. I know. Right? Yeah, that so, D and, is the problem. Yeah, I mean, you can have anxiety and then you can have an anxiety disorder. You can have post-traumatic stress that you'd expect mm. and then you get a PTSD, the D part. And I think it's, that's worth talking about too. It's that Sort of where does where does the label delineate and where does it become this you know top down I'm the expert oppression thing which I think is what's going on in our field right um, I was uh, as we were talking before we went on air about a um, a study that I participated in this person was uh, is interviewing psychologists who are autistic and identifying themes and one of them was the biggest theme was the fear of stigma you know mm -hmm. there was still one I think of the eight of us that isn't out to professionals and every other one of us sort of told our coming out story about being neurodivergent and it was <gasps> what's going to happen it wasn't fear about telling family or my partner or whatever it was what are they going to think about me at work and you're like you work with psychologists and you're worried about what that's a there that's a problem <laughs> right it's weird so um we have some work to do to change that in our field for sure right it's crazy. Yeah. And, you know, I, I mean, I consider myself someone who really desires to stay current. Mm -hmm. What is happening currently? And I have to work actually kind of hard at that, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I have to be very mindful and intentional, I should say, about that yeah. because I, yeah. I want to be respectful. I'm not sure that that's happening kind of across the board. And I get mm -hmm. like... You know, and we're we're here, right? We're we're in um, pronoun preferences. We're in we're in these kind of preferences of labels and yeah. identity. We're we're there as I, from a zeitgeist perspective. We're 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 in it right now. Yeah. Oh, um. Yeah. But I do feel like the neurological differences as a minority or a marginalized group are not nearly um, as. Um, I haven't have not nearly come as far as ethnic identity, sex and gender identity. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So it's definitely you know an area where how do we um, create carve out space and draw attention to it in a way mm -hmm. that's respectful, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And and that that I think is tough. Like again, like I I continue to struggle with it. Despite yeah, it's, my intentions. It, yeah, it's, it, and I think some of it does have to do with what we're learning about it. I mean, we, the, one of my students sort of pressed back about that and said, well, what about like um, a kid who's diabetic? And, I, you know, isn't that a disease? And I say, well, yeah, mm -hmm. if it's the underlying, you know, they were born that way and it was a genetic mutation that's caused this disease state. And he said, isn't autism a, a, the same sort of thing? I said, no, it's not a mutation it's probably a recessive carry gene and you have to have a bunch of those recessive genes to express for this to happen. So there's a lot that's trying to go on to not have it express, but it's not a diseased mutation. 
it's a it's a possible genetic uh, outcome of humans, right? That's the difference. And I don't think 15, 20 years ago, we could have said that, you know, a lot of work's been done after the human genome, trying to map these things out and figure out what's going on. Um, the other thing that sort of blow, blew my mind several years ago when I was reading about race, there are, you have more genes dictating your hair color than you have dictating your race. So the fact that we artificially separate people you know, but, and that part, people are like, oh, it's that. I'm like, no, it's really the cultural differences that you freak out about because it's the other and you don't take the time to look outside your own sandbox. You know, that's what, that's what you're really reacting to and that's okay. Um, and I think that that is starting a little bit in the neurodiversity movement is this sense of, yeah, we're in a different sandbox, but you know, we're cool too, or, you know, you can talk to us. <laughs> Right. As we see more people showing up in, in movies and television shows and um, uh, people, there are public figures coming out as autistic. I think it helps. Right. I'll get that um, on TikTok. I'll have adults. I have my intro video on there. Right. And a lot of times uh, people say it's so great to have representation, but a lot of times it'll be, oh, thank you for this my four-year-old was just diagnosed and I'm freaking out and I'm like, I totally get it. But now I see you and okay, that's opening my eyes to what the coulds be. And I'm like, that's, that's great. So don't, don't put someone in a tight container um, when they're telling you, don't put me in there. Right. And so the sense of celebratory or wanting diversity in general are all good things and it's our fear that gets in the way and typically fear is just because you don't have enough information so get the information right ask for it yeah look for it yeah, yeah. ask for it i mean you gave that example uh maybe in one of the episodes we were doing about autism in the media mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and how you know your friend reached out and was like hey dina you know i have a question for you you know, that's great. You know, that's yeah. like, what is your personal experience um, of this, of this trait, of this characteristic? Like, wow, yeah. this, this person, is this person autistic? They never get angry. Was it Ted Lasso or something? Dana, what was it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was my brother-in-law wanted to know if I thought Ted Lasso was autistic because he never gets angry. I'm like, that's not what autism is. So yeah. yeah, he needed to do more reading about it, more research about it to know what that was. Cause that's kind of a stereotype view, right? Yeah, well, like, like emotionless. I, yeah, emotionless. Yeah. Oh, I can yeah. guarantee you when we get angry. There's lots of Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're perfectly mm. capable of being angry. Yeah. 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 I mean, if anything, I, 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 I feel like many um, autistics um, feel things very intensely. And that yeah. intensity is actually what leads to some of the shutdown or the guarding or the avoidance right. Right. versus I don't. I don't have any emotions like so yeah it's more like sometimes it's more I, like socialize like oh you have all these big emotions you need to sit mm -hmm. still and you learn to mask you learn to repress it yeah that's basically what it comes down to yeah. yeah yeah so you know this so so i i mean i don't think dana i mean dana i don't think we're saying you must use identity first language or person-centered language we're just saying that there is there are kind of these models of language use Mm -hmm. Um, and that there is a thoughtfulness and, and a sensitivity that's required when we're referring to other people. So not referring to ourselves, but we're referring yeah. to other people, being mindful of that, just like you would with any other kinds of descriptor, um, yeah. you know, that we might, that we might use uh, yeah, for, might to function. Ask. Yeah. yeah. Ask yeah, the person. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, mm -hmm. um. So yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, in the, in the comments and thank you guys for, for your comments. They've been, it's really cool. I think Dana and I still are a little bit shocked that people are anyone listening actually like it and leave comments. <laughs> people are listening to it's us. That imposter syndrome we will never yeah. get over. <laughs> we'll never, we'll never get over it. It's okay. Um, but you know, if you want to put in the comments, what your preference, you know, are, are you an identity first or a person centered kind of um, person uh, in regards to labels and, yeah. and, and identity, uh, you know, that would, that's, that's kind of cool. Maybe we'll take a little poll 
um, yeah. there that way. And there's no right or wrong. Again, we're just right. we're just here to talk about and maybe encourage our colleagues, Dana, our psych, our psychology and medical colleagues, yeah. yeah, to get um um to get with it. Yeah, uh, my my with it. mom, rest her soul. She used to always say she'd kind of put her hands up and she'd say, "Wake up." You know, I mean, it was kind of jolting and it was like, but I always hear that like, yeah, wake up people, wake up. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. sense of um, step outside your own lily pad and look around and, you know, <laughs> lily pad, sandbox, I'm using a lot of metaphors. Lily um, pad. Right. I oh turned into a frog suddenly, but like yeah, yeah, okay. beyond your nose. It, as yeah. you were saying those things too, like labels that reminded me of um, one of the, wonderfully fun things about TikTok is they have all these filters you can use. So there's like all these uh, artificial intelligence ones. And like the one that came out recently, it was it was like your Star Wars character or something. And inevitably, every time me or my wife does it, because we both have short hair, it turns us into a dude. And there would probably would have been a point in my life where I'd be like, God, that, and I'm like, of course, because I'm sure that's what they programmed into the AI. It's like this stereotyped, you can't be a girl with <laughs> short hair. It sounds ridiculous. We know that's not the case, but that same sort of thing, like you're autistic, you can't be doing X, Y, and Z, and you can. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we do this. That's why I started awake. That's why I love those comments when someone says, I have a little kid who's newly diagnosed and I'm terrified as a parent. I want them to see their, what all of the possibilities, the reason we call it a spectrum, right? And it's not a death sentence, right? Um, it, it'll be an uphill struggle because there is a lot of support for kids, right? Because they don't have fully formed brains, but you can, you can get to a place that um, is right for them, I guess, right? But it's so hard. You and I have experience with seeing that, but if you're the one in, the, in that seat and facing that, it's terrifying and no amount of reassurance from other people is really going to help, right? So I can see that, but... Um, yeah, it, representation matters, labels you use matter, and seeing other people with the label they choose is really important, right? So it drives yeah. me crazy when I have colleagues of mine that misgender people all the time, and I'm like, you couldn't take the time to just really, or one that always misspells people's names. I'm like, they've been in the program for five years. How have you not taken that little bit of time to respect them enough to learn how to spell their name. I'm not going to swear, so you don't have to bleep. Nice job, right? Dana. Hey, Way I was to... took a lot of restraint. Right? <laughs> my Dana. mom's in my head wow. going, no, say it, say it, say it. <laughs> um, but that, yeah, it, it, it's a, that humanness to humanness and give us the, um, the time and give each other the time to want to know. It's just kindness. Really. Yeah, so it's it's a kindness, it's a thoughtfulness, it's a mm -hmm. it's a desire for understanding. This is these yeah. are kind of thematic things that roll through our podcast. You yeah. know, and, and I would say, you know, when someone says, I don't like that person-centered language because autism for me is not a growth or a disease or something to be cured. Right. I mean, that's you know, and and this is kind of the backlash with autism speaks. Um part of oh, part yeah. of it, you know, yeah. there. Yeah. Um and, you know, it, I, I think this is just a human decency piece. And, and it just, right. this doesn't just, you know, extend to neurological differences. Yeah. Um, it extends, you know, to kind of existing yeah, together everybody. on a planet um, amongst different people. And thank goodness right. we're different. You know, yeah. we don't all want to be the same person. Um, and I think the other thing that I think about whenever a parent, you know, is really – um, reasonably panicked and anxious about a diagnosis mm. early on. And one is because they care so deeply about their child and they want them to yeah. be okay. But, you know, the neuromajority, the world out there, isn't friendly yeah. for, for, for differently wired folks. Sure. Um, and, and that's so – it's like find, find the space, find mm. the place where the strengths can be celebrated and the weaknesses don't matter so much. Yeah. Um, and if you can't find that, create that in yeah. some way, shape or form and lean right in. Because yeah. if I think about where those people have been plugged in, where our society is better for it. 
Um, and we can talk about a lot of different advances and a lot of different things that have happened in our world that have advanced us because of autistic brains. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. And so we need, we need, we need them. Uh, but yeah. we need different thinking, you know, and we need, we need variety and diversity is good in and every diversity. Way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 We really do. We really do. So it's about being, um, yeah, I think kindness is a good period mm -hmm. and, uh, summary to that. Yeah. 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 Be kind awesome. to one another, like Ellen says. Yeah. Yeah. And then what, is, and then Dana, and then Dana says like, what, be good to you. Be good to you. And yeah. be good to you yeah. and be good to others, you know? That's right. Um, all right, everyone. We will catch you in the next episode. See everyone later. Bye. Bye.